Exodus 8. Then Adam I told Moses, say to Aaron, stretch out your hand with your staff and over the rivers and canals and pools, and cause frogs to come up over the land of Egypt. So Aaron stretched out his hand over the waters of Egypt, and the frogs came and covered the land. Where the magicians did the same with their secret arts and brought up frogs over the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, Pray to Adonai that he would take the frogs away from me and my people. Then I will let the people go so they may sacrifice to Adonai. Moses answered Pharaoh, Boast about me after I pray for you. When am I about to pr when I, when am I about when am I to pray for you, your servants and your people, that the frogs would be cut off from you and your houses and remain only in the Nile? Tomorrow, he said. So he said, Let it happen according to your word, so that you may know that your that there is none like God and I are God. The frogs will depart from you, from your house, from your servants, and from your people. They will remain only in the Nile. After Moses and Aaron went out from Pharaoh, Moses cried out to Adonai concerning the frogs which he had brought upon Pharaoh. So Adonai acted according to the word of Moses, and the frogs died out in the houses, the courts, and the fields. The pile then began in large heaps, and the land stank. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart and did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. So Adonai said to Moses, Tell Aaron, stretch out your staff and strike the dust of the earth, and it will become gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. So they did. When Aaron struck out his, stretched out his hand with his staff and stuck the dust of the earth, there were gnats and men and animals. All the dust of the earth became gnats throughout all the land of Egypt. When the magicians attempted the same with their secret arts to bring forth gnats, they could not. There were gnats on the men and on animals. And the magician said to Pharaoh, This is the finger of God. But Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and he did not listen to them, just as Adonai had said. Then Adonai said to Moses, Rise up early today early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh as he comes to the water and says to him, This is what Adonai says, Let my people go, that they may serve me, or else if you do not let my people go, I will send them swarms of flies on you and on your servants and on your people and into your house. The houses of the Egyptians will be full of the swarm of flies, including the ground that they stand on. Then on that day, I will set apart the land of Goshen, where my people are dwelling, except no swarm of flies will be there, so that you may know that I, and I am in the midst of the earth. I will make a distinction between people and your people, but tomorrow the sign will happen. Adonai did just so. A massive swarm of flies went into the house of Pharaoh and into his servant's house. All the land of Egypt was ruined because of the swarm of flies. So Pharaoh called for Moses and for Aaron and said, Go, sacrifice to your God in the land. But Moses said, That would not be right. For the offerings we intend to sacrifice to Adonai God, to the Egyptians, when they stone us, we must three we must walk a three day journey into the wilderness and sacrifice to Adonai our God, just as he tells us. Pharaoh said, "I will let you go, so that you may sacrifice Adonai your God in the wilderness. Only you must not go very far away. Pray for me." So Moses said, "See, I am leaving you." And I will pray to Adonai that the swarm of flies will depart from Pharaoh, his servants, and from his people tomorrow. However, let Pharaoh no longer deal deceitfully by not letting the people go. Sacrifice to Adonai. Then Moses went out to Pharaoh. Pray to Adonai. Adonai connect, acted according to the word of Moses and removed the swarm of flies from Pharaoh, from his servants, and from his people. Nothing remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart this time also and did not let the people go. Chapter 9. Exodus 9. Then Adonai said to Moses, Go in to Pharaoh and tell him, This is what Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so they may serve me. For if you refuse to let them go and hold them still, behold, the hand of Adonai will fall upon your livestock that are in the field, on the, on the horses, donkeys, camels, herds, and flocks. There will be a crushing plague, but Adonai will make a distinction between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and nothing will die that belongs to Benai Israel. <sighs> also, Adonai said a specific time, saying, Tomorrow Adonai will do this thing in the land. And the next day, Adonai did, did, did the deed. All the cattle of Egypt died, yet of the cattle of Benai Israel, not one died. When Pharaoh inquired, there was not so much as one of the cattle of Benai Israel dead, but the heart of Pharaoh was stubborn, and he did not let the people go. Then Adonai said to Moses and to Aaron, Take handfuls of soap from the furnace, and have Moses throw it in heavenward in the sight of Pharaoh. Then it will become fine dust over all the land of Egypt, and will become boils erupting with sores in both men and animals throughout all the land. So they took soap from the furnace and stood before Pharaoh, and Moses threw it heavenward 
It became boils erupting with sores in both men and animals. Moreover, the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils, because they were on the magicians as on all the Egyptians. But Adonai hardened the heart of Pharaoh, so he did not listen to them. Just as Adonai had said to Moses. Then Adonai said to Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say to him, This is what Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, says, Let my people go so they may serve me. For this time I will send all my plagues to your heart, and all your servants and your people, so that you may know that there is none like me in all the earth. Surely by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. However, I have let you stand for this reason to show you my power, and that my name might be proclaimed throughout all the earth. Yet still you exalt yourself over my people by not letting them go. Behold, tomorrow at about this time I will cause it to rain a very severe hailstorm, the likes of which has not occurred in Egypt since the day it was founded until now. Send word, shelter your cattle and all that you have in the field for every person and animal found in the field and not brought home. When the hail comes down on them, they will die. Whoever feared the word of God among the servants of Pharaoh had his own servants and cattle flee into the houses, but whoever disregarded the word of Adonai left his servants and cattle into the field. Then Adonai said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven, and let there be hell on all the land of Egypt, on people, animals, and every plant in the field. <laughs> so Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and Adonai sent thunder and hail. Fire came down on the earth as Adonai reigned. Hail in the land of Egypt. The hail fell very severely with fire flashing up amidst the hail. The likes of which had not occurred in all the land of Egypt since it became a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the field, both men and animals, all throughout the land of Egypt. It also struck every plant in the field and broke down every tree. Only in the land of Goshen, where Benai Israel were, there was no hail. So Pharaoh sent, called for Moses and Aaron, and said to them, I have sinned this time. Adonai is righteous. While I and my people are wicked, pray to Adonai. There has been enough of God's thunders and hail. I will let you go. You do not have to stay any longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to Adonai. The thunder will cease and there will be no more hail, so you may know that the earth is Adonai's. But as for you and your servants, I know that you do not yet fear Adonai Elohim. The flax and barley were destroyed because the barley was in the ear and the flax was in bloom. But the wheat and the spelt were not destroyed because they ripened later. Moses went into, out, out of the city, away from Pharaoh, and stretched out his hands to Adonai. Then the thunder and hail ceased, and rain no longer poured down on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain, the hail, and the thunder had ceased, he increased his sin and hardened his heart. Both he and his servants, so Pharaoh's heart was hardened. He did not let Benai and Israel go, just as Adonai had said by Moses' hand. Chapter 10 then Adonai said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh, because I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servant, so that I might show these signs, these my signs in their midst, so that you may tell your son and your grandchildren what I have done in Egypt, as well as my signs that I did among them, so that you may know that I am Adonai. So Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said to him, This is what Adonai, the God of the Hebrews, says. How long would you refuse to humble yourself before me? Let my people go so they may serve me, or else if you refuse to let my people go, behold, tomorrow I will bring locusts into your borders. Then they will cover the face of the earth so that no one will be able to see the ground. They will eat the remainder of what escaped whatever is left from the hail and eat every tree that grows for you out in the field. Your houses will be filled as will the houses of all the servants and the houses of all the Egyptians, as neither your fathers nor your grandfathers have seen since the day they were on the earth until today. Then he turned and went out from Pharaoh. Pharaoh's servant said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Send them in, so they may serve Adonai their God. Don't you realize yet that Egypt is being destroyed? So Moses and Aaron were brought to Pharaoh again. Go serve Adonai your God, he said. But who will be going? Moses answered, We will go with our young and our elderly, our sons and our daughters. We will go with our flocks and our herds. We must, for we must have Adonai's feast for him. But he said to them, So may Adonai be with you. If ever do I let you, if I ever do let you go. Oh, oops. Where am I? How long will this man send the men so that they serve Adonai their God? Don't you realize that Egypt is being destroyed? So Moses 
and Aaron were brought to Pharaoh again. Go serve Adonai your God, he said. But who will be going? Moses answered, We will go with our young and our elderly, our sons and our daughters. We will go with our flocks and our herds, for we must have Adonai's feast for him. But he said to them, So may Adonai be with you, if I ever do let you go with your little ones. See clearly now, evil is in your face. Not so. Go now, the men, and serve Adonai. For that's what you were seeking. Then they were driven out from Pharaoh's presence. And Adonai said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the land of Egypt for the locusts, so they may come up onto Egypt and eat every plant in the land, everything the hill has left. So Moses stretched out his staff over the land of Egypt, and Adonai brought an east wind over the land all that day and all night. When it was morning, the east wind brought locusts. The locusts came up all over the land of Egypt and rested on the entire territory of Egypt. So dense there was nothing like it before them, nor will there ever be again. For they covered the face of the whole earth, so the land was darkened, and they ate every plant in the land, and all the fruit from the trees of the hill left. No green thing remained, nor a tree or a plant of the field throughout all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh quickly called for Moses and Aaron, and said, I have sinned against Adonai your God and against you. Now forgive my sin only this once, please. So pray to Adonai your God, just so he would take his death away from me, this death away from me. So he went out from Pharaoh and prayed to Adonai. And then Adonai turned the wind from the west very strong and it carried off the locusts and drove them into the seas of reeds. Not one locust remained in all the territory of Egypt, but Adonai hardened Pharaoh's heart and he did not let Benai Israel go. Then Adonai said to Moses, stretch out your hand toward heaven and there will be darkness all over the land of Egypt, a darkness that may be felt. So Moses stretched out his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt for three days. They could not see one another, nor could anyone rise from this place for three days. Yet all Benai Israel had light within their dwellings. Pharaoh called to Moses and said, Go, serve Adonai, and only let your flocks and your herds remain. Your little ones may also go with you. But Moses said, You must also put sacrifices and burnt offerings into our hand, and we will do it for Adonai our God. Our cattle must go must also go with us, not a hoof many may be left behind. We must take from them to serve Adonai our God. We ourselves will not see how we will serve Adonai until we arrive there. But Adonai hardened Pharaoh's heart, and he was unwilling to let them go. So Pharaoh said to him, Go away from me, take heed, and never see my, to see my face again, because on the day you do, you will die. Right, and Moses said, You said it. May I never see your face again.